Okay. And if you look at those practice questions, that is the way the pattern is going to be in the real exam. Okay. Please, uh, for those of you who did not score A, or uh, a meter one, is another opportunity to score A. Okay. It's going to be that pattern that I show. Okay. Uh, you know, that we got more than 1 billion set of questions that can actually come from the same area. Okay, so I want to welcome you to another statistical topic. Uh, you know what, this area is very, this particular topic is very, very crucial, you know, uh, to the scientific community, you know, to research community in general, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, all research community uh, actually make use of statistical inputs. Uh, hardly will you find a paper, an article published without statistical inputs. Okay, so um, with the, you know how do we you know when you conduct an hypothesis? You remember the other time I wore, I introduced you to hypothesis testing. Okay, where we actually uh, testing uh, evidence against. Uh, the non hypothesis. Uh, I remember I walk you through different kind of tests, and the idea we were using, we're trying to use. Um, you know, uh, we constructed the. Uh, we got a test statistic. We constructed the rejection region uh, based on the alternative hypothesis of the test, and we took a decision rejecting the non-hypothesis when the test statistic falls in the rejection region. Okay, you know, that, that, that could be complicated. Okay, uh, can we have a uniform way to take a decision? Okay, the uniform way to take a decision is through the use of p-value. Okay, and that's what I want to demonstrate today. You know, p-value. Okay, and what do we mean by p-value? Okay, you know, the idea behind p-value is, can I identify the smallest possible of the level of significance? You know, we got level of significance, right? What is the level of significance? The one we denote uh, by alpha that I call the maximum probability of committing type one error. Okay, so the p-value is actually going to be um, the smallest value of the level of significance uh, that we uh, enable us to reject or take a decision regarding uh, the non-hypothesis. Don't forget, okay, when you take a look at this, what am I trying to say is this. So the p-value we now uh, actually is going to be the probability of observing an extreme value when the non-hypothesis is true, okay? When the non-hypothesis is true, what is the probability that I'm actually going to observe a stream value? But let me start from here. Before the use of p-value, we normally investigate whether the test statistic, the test statistic is TS. If, if it falls in rejection region, what are we going to do? We're going to reject the non-hypothesis, right? Okay. Now, and if it doesn't fall in the rejection region, Okay, that will lead us not to reject the non-hypothesis. Okay, which means we're more or less rejecting the alternative. Okay, now, and before we can actually set up that, we normally put into consideration uh, alpha. Alpha is a level of significance. It's also called the level of statistical error. Level of statistical error, we can tolerate. And you know what? It's also the maximum probability of committing type 1 error, okay? That is, what is the probability of the test statistic, okay, forcing the rejection region, given that the H naught is true, okay? I need you to uh, take, uh, you know, take a look at that. But let me tell you this. We, want to, we actually want to have a common way of, you know, taking a decision. Okay, we want to have a uniform way of taking a decision and that can be attained using p-value. But let me tell you this, why is p-value very crucial? Okay, why is this p-value very crucial? I'm actually going to talk about number one. Okay, 
I'm talk, I'm going to I'm going to talk about decision making. Okay, uh, decision making. Okay, uh, because of my time, <laughs> I don't have pay. I I'm actually um going to do this. Oh, wait a minute. Why is it not cleaning? Okay, so it's going to clean now. Okay, so um, number one, decision making. Number two, interpretation. Number three, on uncertainty. Number four, comparison. Okay, I'm talking about what significance of p value. Because before I take you into uh statistical principle or mathematical principle around p value, so why why is it so significant? Number one, decision making. Okay, the p value actually uh measure um the the strength of the evidence against the non hypothesis. I'm going to say that again. You know the p value measures quantitatively the strength of the evidence against the non hypothesis. When I say non hypothesis, you know the evidence against H O. Okay, so that is what p value measure. Okay, and in the interpretation. Okay, if I'm testing the effect, like maybe in clinical trial, I'm testing the effect of a new drug. Okay, under the non hypothesis, okay, uh, old maybe it's going to favor old drug. Okay, we have a conventional drug, and under the alternative, new drug is okay. Now, the interpretation is going to be okay, when p value is less than a given level of significance, okay? We're actually going to reject the non-hypothesis indicating that the new drug is significant, okay? Why higher values of p-value? When, p, when we have higher values of p-values, that indicate insignificant. The lower values of p-values indicate significance. That is for the interpretation, okay? That is for any test whatever test you conduct. Then on Saturday, okay, the p-value actually acknowledge the fact that there is on, on, on Saturday in statistical analysis, on Saturday in the sense that when you have uh, lower p, uh, higher p-values, for instance, if you have higher p-values, you know what that means? Higher p-values means, um, you know, the, the, the variation or, or, the, or, or in the observed data can be attributed to chance. It's not, uh, you know, it's uh, not pronounced. There's always going to be variation in life, okay? IRP values actually mean the uh, uncertainty that we have is just due to chance variation and why lower P values indicate that this is more than chance variation. Now, for comparison purpose, you know, if I really want to investigate the consistent of results across studies. Maybe studies actually, uh, different researchers investigate the same thing, okay? And I look at their p-values, okay? If their p-values, uh, if, they, if they all claim significance and their p-values actually less than a given level of significance, of course, we're actually gonna trust the, uh, the decision that this is consistent. Does that mean sense? That's what I mean by comparison. Okay, now you understand the significance of p-value now. Let us now see how p-value work. Now what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna revisit the example that I walk you through the other time. You remember in this example, that has to do with 10.7, uh, uh, okay, uh, this example, we actually compare how men and women uh, react like to stimulus, like comparing the reaction times of men and women to stimulus. We, we use the idea of hypothesis testing where we 
compare, you know, we look at the, we check whether the test statistic falls in the rejection region and we took a decision, you know, what we want to do now. Uh, and we also, I remember, we also used um, last sample confidence interval last Friday on this same question. The last sample confidence interval indicated that there's no zero in the interval. And that's actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, that actually confirmed the decision that we made initially. But you know what we want to do today? We want to see PVAL. We want to use PVAL on the same question. Now, take a look at this. We actually, uh, you know, the question asks, do the data present sufficient evidence uh, to suggest a difference between uh, the true mean reaction time for men and women? And of course, they give you uh, the level of significance. Of course, uh, we're going to, we're actually going to set up this. Okay, why do I set up this? We I showed you before. Uh, There's going to be a two T, right? And my rejection region, of course, whenever you are working with a two T, the rejection region is always going to be absolute value for Z, okay, greater than Z alpha over two. And of course, you know, uh, the observed test statistic we, the other time we got negative 2.5, okay? And, uh, I, you know, negative 2.5, when you check Z alpha over 2, that is 1.96, okay? That is 1.96, okay? So if I take the absolute value of that, negative 2.5, that would be 2.5, right? And compare with 1.96 at a 0 0.05 level of significance, of course, uh, using the idea of a test statistic. Now, you can see that test statistic actually falls in the rejection region. We reject the non-hypothesis, you know, concluding that uh, there are different uh, reaction time to stimulus between men and women. Okay, let me, let me also show you this. If I change my level, because if I want to figure out using the p-value now, what is the genesis of the p-value? Okay, how do we uh, come about p-value? Okay, because with the p-value, we're actually looking for alpha cap. Okay, we're looking for alpha cap. Okay, we're looking for the lowest possible value for our level of significance, you know, to go against the non-hypothesis. Don't forget, we are always looking to see uh, the, the, the strength or the magnitude of the evidence that we're going to have to be able to go against the non-hypothesis. Don't forget the non-hypothesis always uh, the hypothesis of interest, you know, the primary interest, hypothesis of no effect. Does that make sense? Now, when alpha is 0 0.02, now, if when I decrease the alpha, okay, what is going to happen? Don't forget, when I decrease the level of significance, I'm increasing the level of confidence. Because at 5%, the level of confidence is 95%. When I decrease to 0 0.02, okay, the level of confidence, we go from 95 to 98%. Does that make sense? And when that happens, our disease score is actually going to be increasing. Okay, so, you know, the, what we notice here, when the level of confidence is going down, sorry, when the level of significance is going down, the level of confidence is going up. And what happened to the Z score? The Z score is also going to be going up. I just wanted to take note of that. Okay, that's what you see now. The, you know, if I put a base on 5% level of significance and 2% level of significance, I'm actually rejecting the non-hypothesis because the, uh, the Z value, the absolute value of that is going to be 2.5. Is it going to be greater than then? But you know what? When I consider 1% level of significance, oh my God, 1% level of significance means I'm 99% sure. 99% confidence, the Z-score is 2.58, but at that, I can, I can no longer reject the non-hypothesis because the, uh, the test statistic does not fall in the rejection region anymore. Take a look at that. Okay, so that is what I'm actually indicating here. That's what I'm indicating. Let me tell you this. You know, statistical story, if you can listen very well, Statistical story is a very good story, okay? Uh, if you really listen to what is behind the scene, okay? You are, it's going to reveal all the reason behind all your mathematics. Okay, now take a look at that right now. So I said, you know, what I have in red, 
when the level of significance go down, the evidence needed for rejection go up. That's what I mean. Okay, don't forget, we are actually investigating the evidence against the non-hypothesis. Okay, now, depending on what alpha is, we could reject or fail to reject based on, on the same data. I can tell you I'm 90% confident. And if you say, what about 95? I'm going to say no. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So take a look at that. And that is what that picture is actually showing. Okay, now, please, I need you to pay attention now. We're actually building. Okay, now, instead, why can't we? Okay, I said here, uh, p value instead of reporting whether H naught is rejected at a given significance level alpha, we can actually report a p value. Every research article, you know, that talk about uh, measures of effect or uh, always uh, ask the statistical input, and what you're going to see is p value. Okay, now, uh, so a p value or attain significance uh, level. Now, I, I actually put in a definition now. Okay, I say, if W is a test statistic, okay, the p-value or attain significance level is the smallest level of significance alpha for which the observed data indicate the non-hypothesis should be rejected. Okay, which I'm actually calling alpha cap. Okay, if, if, if alpha represents the level of significance, okay, the level of statistical error, the maximum probability of committing type 1 error, then the alpha cap, which is the smallest level of alpha ever, would be the p-value, which actually measures quantitatively evidence against the non-hypothesis. Now, we want to do something right now. I just need you to pay attention. Okay? Now, this is what we're actually going to do. I'm demonstrating something here. Still on the example uh, 10.7, okay? I want you to look at, we want to consider a different rejection region, okay? Uh, for alpha equal to 0 0.05, for alpha equal to 0 0.01, for alpha equal to 0 0.124. I just wanted to take note of all of these, okay? Now, we actually want to see what significance level will correspond to the test statistic that we have. The test statistic, let me tell you this. If I want to figure out p-value, I need to put into consideration the nature of the alternative. I'm going to say that again. If I want to figure, if I want to obtain the p-value uh, p value for a test, I need to put into consideration the nature of the alternative hypothesis. Okay, even though I want to take a decision about the non-hypothesis, HO, but if I want to figure out p-value, then I'm actually going to focus on the nature of the alternative. Now, I need you to take a look at what I have now, okay? For zero rejection region for 0 0.05 is going to be 1.96 when you check from statistical table. Okay. Now, oh, sorry. So 1.96 for, you know, when you check from statistical table. Okay. And, you know, for alpha equal to 0 0.01, that would be 2.58. Okay. Where does 2.5 lies? The 2.5 actually lies. In the middle of 1.96 and 2.58, do you see the red? You see the red, right? The, where, where, where is the 2.5 coming from? The 2.5 was the test statistic that we got. Okay? Don't forget what's negative. We actually uh, get the absolute value because the alternative hypothesis was two tail. Does that make sense? Okay, now it's actually four. Now when the four, okay, take a look at this. At 5%. The rejection region was 0 0.05. Okay. At uh 1%, it is 2.58. But I'm trying to figure how what would be the corresponding uh level of significance for uh you know the absolute value of z equal to 2.5. I want to believe that's gonna lie between is 0 0.01 and is 0 0.05. And we found that to be 0 0.1 two, four, out. Oh, 
how do we find it to be 0. Uh, 0. 0.0124? The 0. 0.0124 now is going to be the pivot. But how do we find it? I need you to listen. I need you to pay attention. Now, we are actually seeking the smallest rejection region to reject H0 based on the observed value. The observed value is the test statistic value. Okay, now, uh, because I'm dealing with a two-tail, it's actually going to be this guy. Can you see this guy now, right? Which is going to be the union of negative to negative 2.5, then 2.5 to infinity. Okay, if you take a look at that, we actually want to figure out the corresponding significance level alpha cap. The alpha cap now is the p-value that we're looking for. Okay, so take a look at this. We want to find the probability, oh my God, the probability associated with that event is actually alpha cap. Not alpha, alpha cap, the p-value. Alpha cap is a p-value, which is uh, 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 it's like figuring out the level of significance associated with that test stat uh, statistical value. And you know what that means? Whenever you have that, it's the same thing as this. It is the same thing whenever you are conducting. What am I talking about? When I'm conducting a two-tay test, alternative show, two-tay test, then the probability uh, uh, that my p value will be the probability of the absolute value of z greater than greater or equal to 2.5 all the time. It has to be that all the time. Does that make sense? Okay, now if that happened, oh my god, that would be super easy to figure out whenever you are dealing with the absolute value. Okay, mathematically speaking, dealing with the absolute value, okay, is always going to be. Um, you, you know, the uh, it's going to be two multiply by the probability of z greater or equal to 2.5. What am I mathematically speaking? Okay, I want to remove the absolute value. If I want to remove the absolute value, then I'm going to multiply the whole thing by two. Okay, now what am I going to do first? Please, I need you to pay attention. What I'm going to do first is I will go to z table, check for 2.5. Don't forget in the Z table, uh, the, t the Z table uh, always provide for less than. Like I said, the Z table provide for less than what I, my p-value here is 2 multiplied by z greater or equal to 2.5, okay? And do you know that this guy is the same as 1 minus this less than 2.5, okay? Now, this is what I'm going to check from z table, okay? When I check this guy from z table, subtract it from 1, multiply by 2, that will give me uh, is 0 0.0124, which is the p-value. Does that make sense? That is the p-value. Okay? And what we're trying to tell, what we're trying to say now, okay, the level of significance given was 0 0.05, and the height, you know, if I want to make a statistical decision now, what I'm going to do is uh, to compare my p-value with the level of significance given, okay, now to re to be able to reject the non hypothesis okay uh we must be able to find a p value that will be less than the level of significance given and right now 0 0.0124 is less than 0 0.05 so which means we are rejecting the non hypothesis so this actually is the same with the decision we took the other time, uh, when we when we base our decision on whether the our test statistic is going to fall on the rejection region, and also using what I call the last sample confidence interval. Okay, does that make sense to you now? Okay, so now this is the verification. If you take a look at this guy. When alpha greater or equal to alpha cap, what is alpha? Alpha is the level of significance. What is alpha cap? 
alpha cap is actually uh, the p-value that we talk about, okay? Now, if alpha greater or equal to alpha cap, okay, when you check that in the table, the z alpha over two will be less or equal to z alpha cap over two. And in that situation, the h naught will be rejected, okay? And take a look at that. So the smallest level of significance for which h naught is rejected is the p-value. Does that make sense? Okay. In a situation where p-value is greater than alpha, then we're going to fail to reject. We do not have a sufficient evidence to go against the non-hypothesis. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if that is taken now, you know, I told you, when you understand um, the story behind statistics, everything is going to be so easy. Okay, now, uh, in our example that we just did, that we got uh, Z to be uh, negative 2.5, and we take the absolute value that gave us uh, 2.5, what if in a situation where we want to, cons uh, maybe we got a different value that is not 2.5, we got in a value now 2.0, let's just say we got 2.0, Okay, our test statistic value could be anything. Okay, let's say we got 2.0 and the, the alternative hypothesis is two tail. If the alternative hypothesis is two tail, of course, I told you, uh, if you want to find the p-value now, it's actually going to be that. That is how to find a p-value. Let me tell you this. To find a p-value, you don't need, it doesn't depend on the level of significance. Does that make sense? To find p-value, you do not need level of significance. Do you know when you need level of significance? When you're about to take a decision comparing your p-value with a given level of significance. In, in this computation now, do I need level of significance? No. I only going to, what I need is my test statistic value. And the sign, the sign. Where, where am I going to get the sign? The sign from the alternative. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, uh, if I if I actually based on z greater or equal to two, which means I'm going to change this guy to two. When I go to the table, it's just going to give me the value. At the end of the day, it's going to be zero point zero four five six. Do you know? Looking at that p value. Okay, whatever level of significance given, I can now compare to take a decision. What am I telling the world here? What I'm telling the world is, okay, you know what? When the level of significance given is 0 0.05, because the p-value here less than that, of course, I will reject, yes. If I want to base it on uh, 0 0.02 level of significance, I'm not going to reject because the p-value is 0 0.0456 is greater than that. Whenever a p-value is greater than a given level of significance, you do not have any evidence, a sufficient evidence to go against a non-hypothesis. Is there any question here? Any question? Okay, you are good, right? Okay, then I'm going to move. I'm actually going to move. Now, let's take a look at this. We can summarize now. When the, we're talking about statistical tests, two equivalent procedure that can be used is either you base your decision trying to investigate whether the test statistic value falls in the rejection region or you want to use uh, p-value to take a decision. P-value is very common. Okay, uh, you know, across uh, research feed and anywhere in the world, okay, we use p-value. Okay, what I'm trying to say, when you observe uh, test statistic deviate from the non-hypothesis, okay, that is when it goes up, what happens to p-value? P-value goes uh, down. And when p-value goes down, okay, it means you want to have a lower values of p-value, then that will enable you to reject the non-hypothesis. Okay, 
So, so when the evidence against the non-hypothesis go up, then you will be able to reject. Does that make sense? And, and, and what measure the extent of the evidence against the non-hypothesis is a p-value? Does that make sense? Okay, that's exactly what I'm saying here. In summary, okay, so if you take a look at this uh, in my remark here, I said the p-value evaluate extent to which observed data disagree with h not. I told you from the one, uh, statistical procedure is similar to scientific procedure where a scientist we observe nature and come out with an hypothetical statement. And after coming out with hypothetical statement, if we go to the population, okay, and take a sample and see and investigate whether there's going to be uh, agreement or disagreement between the observed data and the hypothetical statements. Okay, and p-value provide us, uh, you know, uh, uh, quantitatively, you know, the extent of that evidence against the non-hypothesis. And that is the reason whenever we want to take a decision, we normally refer to the non-hypothesis. Okay, even though when we want to figure how the p-value, we consider the alternative. But when you want to take a decision, then we're actually going to center it around the non-hypothesis. Either we reject it or we fail to reject it. Okay, in summary, take a look at what I have. Uh, when you have a data set, you get a test statistic. When the test statistic falls in the rejection region, what are you going to do? you actually going to reject you know, the H0 at a given level of significance. And if it doesn't fall, Okay, if the test statistic doesn't fall in the rejection region, you actually gonna fail to reject. That was a traditional way, okay, to take a decision in, uh, uh, you know, regarding hypothesis testing. But right now, what we are actually suggesting uh, is that, okay, uh, the use of p-value is actually gonna do a uh, great job, okay, uh, you know, uh, it's gonna be so it's gonna be so simple taking decision. Okay, take a look at this. Now, this is what you should take note. Okay, p value less or equal to alpha. You reject the non hypothesis that indicate significance, and our p value greater than alpha means you do not have a sufficient evidence uh, to go against the non hypothesis. Okay, if that is second, I'm actually gonna move. Please, I need you to pay attention now. Now, in general, if I have a rejection region, W greater or equal to K, okay? And I want to figure out p-value, okay? And, um, you know, uh, maybe what I'm testing, why do I have greater or equal to K? Maybe my alternative hypothesis is greater than, okay? Now, uh, I'm actually, if I want to compute my p-value, okay, if I want to compute my p-value, my p-value is the probability of W, okay, greater or equal to W0 given the non-hypothesis. Why am I using greater down? Okay, because of the alternative. But what of in a situation where I'm dealing with a lower t test, with a lower t test, of course, the rejection region is going to be less than, right? Okay, now what, how am I gonna figure out my p-value? Oh my God, my p-value, whether I'm talking about uh, a, an, a, an upper t test or lower t test, my p-value is a probability of observing an extreme value when the non-hypothesis is true. That's why you see HOA show, take a look at that. Okay, now, and which actually, Take a look at that. Remarks here, p-value is the probability of obtaining observed result or more extreme value under H0. Okay, it's true. Okay, now, I quickly want us to go over this. Okay, now, you have different kind of tests. Upper T test, okay, 
if you look at the alternative here, right, greater than t that are known, that's an opathy test. You begin, uh, you know, uh, your last sample test with z equal to that. Your your rejection region will be greater than. I told you there's a connection between the rejection region and the alternative hypothesis. Okay, now based on that, you now want to figure how your p value. Take a look. Oh my God, look at that. I want to figure out my p-value now. It's actually going to be the probability of z greater or equal to. Where is it greater or equal to coming from? Because that is what I have in my rejection region. Why do I have that in my rejection region? Because my alternative is greater than. Is that not super easy? Okay, now, and what I'm going to do, I know how to take decision now. Okay, take a decision. When the p-value is less than alpha, I will reject it's not. When it is not, I'm going to fail to reject. Now, let me now quickly go to a situation where we're dealing with a lower t test. Okay? Dealing with a lower t test, we still have the same, uh, you know, test statistic value of our expression. Oh, my God. You know the rejection region is going to be less than. This time around, less than negative of that. Then how am I going to compute my p-value? Oh, my God. Look at my p-value now. My p-value will be z less or equal. Why do I have less or equal? Because I got less or equal in the rejection region. And where does it, uh, what is the origin of that? Because of the alternative is less than, okay? And the same decision of whether I'm dealing with one tail, uh, as in, whether I'm dealing with the upper tail, or lower tail, it is the same decision using p-value. Okay, the same way we take decision. Okay, now, I think I've shown you that of the, now this is for the two tail. Okay, now, oh my God, take a look at the two tail. I think I'm giving you opportunity to be able to compare three different kind of tests that we may be undertaking. Take a look at that. This is the one that has to do with the two tail. Okay. Now, with the two tail, you can see the alternative, the rejection region. We have an absolute value, Z alpha over two. Don't forget that. Greater or equal to that. How do I figure out the P value? Of course, if I want to remove the greater or equal, I mean, uh, the absolute value of Z is going to be two multiplied by the greater. So when you check from the table, you subtract from one, you multiply by two. Take a look at that. And if I want to take a decision, it is the same way of taking decision with P value. Okay, the same way. Okay. Now, I want to have a summary. If I were you, 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 you can write this down. You can take notes of this. This is summary. If I'm conducting any test, whether a two tail or upper tail or lower tail, and I want to figure how my p-value, because the p-value is very, very important, in decision making, it is this p-value that I'm going to compare with the any level of significance. Take a look at that. This is giving you an opportunity to be able to know how to figure out your p-value. Okay, I'm giving you that. That's super cool, right? Now, let us now go into this example. I'm going to walk you through this example in the last. Uh, now. I've walked you through this example before. When a machine in a, a factory must be repaired, you remember we did this, uh, it, uh, if uh, it produces more than 10% defective, okay? More than 10% defective, okay? Uh, among the large lot of items, okay? And, um, you know, a random sample uh, of 100 items from the day's production contains 15 defective as well as I say that the machine must be repaired. Does the sample evidence support its decision? And they give you a level of significance of 0 0.01, okay? And we want to make use of a p-value, okay? Number one, what you're going to do, okay? You're actually going to specify your non and your alternative hypothesis. That is very important. And after doing that, you get your z-score. Which is so after getting your z score, because this is an upper tier test, look at the way uh, we're going to compute our p value, okay? Which is going to be probability of z, okay? Given uh, greater than z, given the non hypothesis is true, 
we're going to check that from table. Okay. When you check from table, you subtract from one. The p-value here will be 0 0.475. And the moment you, you get your p-value, then you can compare with the given level of significance here. You're giving is 0 0.01. Okay. And uh, when the p-value is less than the level of significance, that's when you are rejecting. And what is happening now? Okay. Your 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 p value zero point zero four is uh, is greater, right? You're gonna fail to reject. Does that make sense? Because it's greater. Okay. I want to walk you through another example. The last example that we did. That very example. This is very very crucial. What we want to do now? You remember. Um, we solved this example. We got to we go, we actually went through this problem before. We are so um so uh, you know a political candidate actually claimed that uh it's likely going to secure more than fifty percent of the vote, and we actually argue against that. Okay, when you take a look at the hypothesis that we formulated, this is a lower tail, right? Because of the nature of the alternative. But you know what? We may not, we are actually not going to use because of the fact that the sample is less than 30, the central limit theorem is, going, is not going to apply. You remember that we've been using Z, right? We check Z, okay? We are normality, central limit theory facilitates normality. Normality facilitates standardization and the use of Z score, but this does not qualify, okay? we are actually going to seek redress in a different distribution. Okay, now um, the question here is asking about what p-value is to be able to take a decision. Okay, uh, what p-value is to be able to take a decision. And if y equal to three, you know, y equal to three is a number, maybe that is the observed numbers of people that show interest to vote for the candidate out of 15. Okay? And if that happened, because each of them is a Bernoulli process, the sum of a Bernoulli is binomial. And that follows binomial distribution. Does that make sense? Okay? And that was why we said, Y follow binomial with MP. Okay? What is N? N here is 15. P is a 0 0.5. That is the value under, under the non hypothesis. Now, what, uh, our test statistic in this case is the number of people that show interest in voting for the candidate. And the rejection region is going to be Y less or equal to K. Y less than, because that must agree with the alternative hypothesis. Okay? That must agree with the alternative hypothesis. Now, what I want to do now, if I want to compute my p value, I want to find, if I want to compute my p-value, I, I don't forget, I said I'm going to take into consideration the nature of the rejection region, which is what I'm doing here. Take a look at that. Less than, less than. Do you see that? Now, I we're giving y to be 3. Now, I'm going to use a binomial distribution. This does not qualify for normal approximation. I remember uh, the MOVA is 1733. Actually talk about normal approximation to binomial, but this a normal approximation to binomial is not going to work here because of the fact that it does not meet the threshold. Okay, now uh, I want to find the probability of Y less or equal to 3 given binomial, it means I'm going to go from a 0 to 3. Then it's going to be 15 combination Y, you know all of that, and that is giving us this as a p-value. Is there any question on how we got a p-value now? What is happening now? 0 0.018. What was the level of significance given? The level of significance given, okay, was... Um, Okay, like here, no level of significance specified. And let me also tell you this. If the level of significance was not specified, the standard level of significance is 0 0.05. Okay, now let me have opportunity 
to be able to compare, okay, uh, across different level of significance, okay, uh, is zero point zero one eight is less than is zero point zero five reject is less than is zero point zero two reject, but at zero point zero one we're going to fail to reject. Does that make sense? I will figure it out. Lastly, before we go, can we have a way to figure out? Find the rejection region such that the level of significance is 0 0.05. Do you know, given level of significance, I can find the corresponding rejection region? How are we going to do it? The corresponding rejection region, you know, we already know it, right? That should be 3, right? It should be 3, right? Can we find it? We want to find that 3. How? Okay, take a look at this. Then we're going to use the knowledge of algebra. We want to solve for K. We pretend as if we don't know it's three. Okay. Now we are actually going to use the idea of a cumulative. They can look at this, the binomial distribution here. Okay. Which is going to go from zero to K. Now from zero to K, we're going to start from where K is zero. Where K, we know we are plugging eight into this equation. Where K is zero, it gives us this. When k is 1, is give us this. When k equal to 2, is give us this. When k equal to 3, oh my God. Take a look at that. How do I know 3? How do I know I'm going to stop at 3? Because if I go to 4, the level of significance specified will be exceeded. What was the level of significance specified initially? 0 0.05. And if I go to 4, what will happen? This, the cumulative will be 0 0.059. Therefore, the p-value is 0 0.018, and that will occur at k equal to 3. Period. Is there any question? Is there any question? Do you enjoy the, today's class? Okay. But you know what? Do not hide your feelings. If you don't understand, say, send me a message. Uh, in the absence of question, this is where I'm going to stop today. Make sure you stay safe and enjoy your day. Bye for now, everyone. Sorry about that.